this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Don't know how to make a website, but you need one? Squarespace has your back. Every time I visit Seattle, I visit the Seattle Art Museum and I always leave with some sort of creative something from the gift shop. This time was no different. I left with a make your own playing card kit. So inside the kit we have, it comes with, oh, these are absolutely adorable. I want to turn these into little ornaments for like my Christmas tree. Like they're just so cute. They're probably garbage. And here are the set of cards. The back is this really cute doodly blue. Ooh, cute. And the front, we have these really cute sort of hand-drawn. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love how hand-drawn these numbers and letters look. Oh God, they're so cute. This, this is my vibe for sure. Okay, so we get to the Joker and this is where I was thinking, I really don't think I'm gonna use these markers because I mean, come on. I actually thought it would be really useful to actually use the Joker cards as swatches to test other art materials I have. What kind of markers, paints, pens, different things will actually work best with these. And I don't know, maybe it'll be these little guys. Starting off with the markers that came with the kit because I'm just, I'm curious what, they, what they're like. I also thought it'd be really cute to do a card that's warm colors and a card that's cool colors. So I'm just gonna start off by doing a, a line. Okay, and then a yellow one. Ooh, that's a that's a bright yellow. Our blue and green. Now, do these smudge? Oh, they do not. That is honestly my main concern with any sort of art material on these is that if a wet material goes down on a slightly slick paper, it takes a very long time to dry and sometimes it just simply never dries. Okay, so obviously these guys will be a very good uh, pick if I just want to keep it simple. Next up, my favorite pen, the Sakura Micron pens. I've got a blue and a red pair. We've got our brush. Oh, it's a much more light red than the marker. Again, much lighter, but honestly, we could probably use them together if I really wanted variety. Oh, it's a very nice light blue. It's kind of cute. I love those blues together. I also have to just test out the black. Wee. Will it pass a smudge test? Oh my goodness. No. Okay, so maybe we won't be using microns. Next up, we have your run of the mill Crayola super tip markers. I want to test every single color because I really just want to get more colorful and gradient y with our swatch here. Oh, I don't know about that. The ink didn't go down very. Well, it's beating a little bit on top of the paper. It's also still wet, but it looks like these markers, either they're gonna take a little bit longer to dry or they're not compatible. Next up, I have these Stadler Magic Erase pens. I just saw them in my closet and thought, why not? Let's give them a try. But I don't know about these colors. It only has pink. You don't even know. I love, 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 love a green to blue gradient. It's just the best. Do I think these will dry? Probably not, but I want to try these jelly rolls. Again, not good variety in the warm department. Oh my goodness, they do layer well. I need to get more silly with my lines here. Ooh. Okay, I've given them about a minute to dry. Oh, yeah. Even this really juicy black one's dry. Ooh la la, it is time for Copics. Honestly, this card kind of feels like the sort of paper you would use alcohol markers on. So this feels weirdly normal. Ooh, at the end especially, we have a lot of, what I call it, beading? Wait a second, what happens if I just... Oh, so it looks like that stroke sort of erased other colors that were put down except for the black jelly roll. That is, honestly, it's really fun looking. It's very interesting. But now I'm curious if I were to do that same. <gasps> okay, good to know. Copic markers, probably not the best to use. I think this is going to be our final supply. We have these Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens and these guys are pretty solid, so I have some high hope. Honestly, already some really good variety with our reds to oranges to yellows, so I'm liking that. The question is, does it pass the dry test? I think it does, I think it does. If you're curious, no, I will not be using colored pencils or crayons. I just feel like these two mediums are too crumbly and I need something semi-wet to stay on the paper. But speaking of wet, what? I don't want to work with paints on these guys, but I do just want to give a swatch of the old gouache just to see how it'll be. Okay, 
Painting on slippery paper is not something I'm used to. And a stripe of blue. Okay. I mean, it's not doing horrible. The page isn't like curling up and being dramatic about being a little bit wet. So I think as much as I love paints, we're not gonna use paints. I think depending on the style and what I go with for these cards, didn't mind the original marker. Didn't hate the Crayola, super tipped. The fabric Castell pens also worked pretty well. So these three are going to be my options. You know, if I want to take a more simple approach than the original markers and the limited colors might be fun. I'm excited, but before we get into it, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Where would I be without Squarespace? Well, I wouldn't have a website because I can't make one, but thanks to their flexible website templates, it's super easy. Start with one of their professional website templates, super sleek, award-winning designs, and from there, customize your look, update your content, add features. It's super easy. If I can do it, you can do it. Create your own online store. That's right, you can sell your products online, whether you're selling physical, digital, or service products, and take it a step further with super special members areas. Sell membership access to exclusive sections of your website, super secret, super exclusive. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash caseygolden to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's design these cards. I'm super excited. As you can see, I decided to go with the Faber-Castell Artist Pit Pens. I just liked the nib, I liked the variety in colors, and it's an art material made for artists specifically in mind, so I trusted them. We're starting off with diamonds because this is my absolute favorite set that I created. I wanna start off strong. I'm really proud of this card set, and I wanna talk about it first. So for each set, I chose a color theme to go with. Because the diamonds are red, I went with a warm yellow orange color. And the diamond shape reminded me of stars and I love drawing space. Space is a very common theme in a lot of my illustrations so that's what I went with. I did leave a few blank. I just thought it would be nice to have some breathing room in these playing cards. Personally I find that the number cards look better if they're a little bit more chill. Admittedly the space theme is a little bit simple when it comes to the numbered cards. Basically I just put stars and some space objects planets, asteroids, spaceships, floating around the card. But every once in a while, I would use the colors overlapping on top of the diamonds to just play around with color effects. We're gonna ignore that number nine. I completely forgot to draw nine diamonds. So I thought, let's just throw a black hole in there and you'll never know that the ninth diamond got sucked away. The 10th card is my absolute favorite. The diamond shaped asteroids plus the fire zipping past all of the shapes just looks really neat and I just love that card. So with that being said, let's move on to our Jack. I knew I wanted there to be more detail because like I just said, I like the number cards to be a little bit more chill and at a glance, I like to look at the cards and know what they are. So for Jack, Queen, and King, I wanted to put a more filled, full illustration and have the card itself a lot more colored in. For the space illustrations, it was super simple. Just a big old black space in the background, stars, planets breaking the border. I played around with trying to make some gradients in space. That was a little hard. It was a combination of the art supply plus the card's sleek surface, but I think it works. With Queen and King, I wanted to incorporate crowns in the design somehow. So what's more normal than a fleet of crown-shaped spaceships blasting through space? That's right, nothing, that's completely normal. And for King, I had to get a cat spaceman in there somewhere. And I absolutely love this little guy. It's a little space kitty floating with a UFO in the background and a crown on top because King and cards, look, I just love this space diamond set. I think it turned out really, really cute. two hearts, I wanted to think of something that would maybe go along with the shape of heart. When I looked at the heart, I thought that kind of looks like an apple. I like to draw worms. Maybe we could have worms chewing holes through these hearts or apple shaped objects. 
Heartworm is a thing, kind of gross, but it makes sense. Why am I trying to make this make sense? It doesn't need to make sense. I drew worms chewing through hearts. It's cute and silly. I thought this was the perfect way to keep these cards fun and creative, but also simple because I want the numbers to speak for themselves. The hardest part about designing these cards was just messing around with the art supplies and trying to have them work. As you can see, I did end up going with Sakura Micron pens, even though they did not pass the smudge test. I just wanted a fine liner that I felt comfortable and knew that I could get some nice, solid, thin lines with. They do eventually, and and gradually pass the smudge test over time. They're kind of sticky. I don't really see myself ever playing with these cards. I think I could hit these cards with a spray fix and then they wouldn't be sticky anymore. But at the same time, I look at these cards and I think they're just, they're nice to look at. And I think I would rather just put them in a frame or sell them. Basically, I think they work best to admire than to be played with. Anyway, Jack, Queen and King. <laughs> Going along with the theme of each of these sets of cards, I was thinking about the way I draw worms in my art. And one thing I like to do with these worms is spell words with them. So it made a lot of sense to take a worm and create a cursive letter for each card. It isn't the most creative, but just looking at the simplicity of these cards and the boldness and the silliness of them being worms, I think it works really well. I think they're really cute. I love the big, bold, black shape in the back of them. It really helps the worms pop. I actually don't mind that I couldn't find an art supply that was 100% compatible with this paper type. When I was swatching, I took note that a few of the art supplies were beating or sort of being resisted by the paper but honestly there are little parts throughout all of these cards where the ink goes down absolutely perfect and in some places where the ink was being resisted that combined with the fact that the ink and the markers took so long to dry that I would sometimes get this blending bleeding effect honestly it kind of looked cool I like the artsy handmade sketchy textures I got out of these and I just think they add personality and an artist's touch to them. Anyway, there's the worms. Y'all know I had to make cards with ants on them eventually, and when I saw the, what is this called? club. When I saw the club, it made me think of a clover and I wanted to use green for this set and I just went with it. I turned these into clovers. The individual number cards, these are probably the most uninspired of the entire set. I completely forgot, but I actually meant to mix in some other bugs and creatures that were creepy crawly in with these guys. I also just had a hard time creating something that was abstract and just sort of floating on the card. With space, it was was easy. Space is just a big void where everything is floating. The worms were just sort of floating through the shapes. But with the ants, the ants have legs and I they do sort of float sometimes on these cards. I also just found myself really distracted by trying to find the orientation in which these ants were standing on the card. I just stuck a few ants here and there. The number of ants do correlate with the number of cards. It's the most simple of the set, so let's go ahead and move on to our Jack Queen and king. I really leaned into the clover theme and I wanted this jack to be super lush and green and fun so I just drew a field of clovers. I started off with this weird sort of minty light green color but it just didn't fit with the rest of the colors so thankfully these markers are very easy to color over each other. So I went over that with a light green, stuck a little ant on there and this card is really cool. It's one of my favorites for sure. Moving on to queen I wanted the focus to be the crown, obviously, and then grass, I, I guess. I also didn't want to introduce any other colors because I wanted the primary color of this set to be green. So I thought it would be okay to use shades of gray, which eventually I realized that made a lot of sense because 
crowns can be silver. The gem is a nice emerald. And this card has a nice gradient dark to light green. So this one's really cool. I like this one. And moving on to King, this one is a lot more simple. It's just a crown sitting there with a very large clover coming out of it. It wasn't until I finished this card that I realized that is either the biggest clover in the world or that is a super tiny crown made for a very small creature because they're the same size. Stuck an ant on that guy and there you go. There is our clover ant set. final set the spades I knew I had to do a cat set because you guys know I love drawing cats but I didn't just want to draw a cat on these cards I wanted to get inspiration from something and the spades just weren't doing it for me I did pick a blue theme because red yellow green blue the basic of colors I was sort of getting spirity blue fire flame vibes from these shapes I have no idea so when I started drawing this black cat I started to think Maybe it's like a ghostly, spirity, spooky specter black cat. We can just mess around with it being abstract and fun and shapely. So the first few cards, we just have some cats floating around being spooky. And then when I got to the sixth card, I noticed it was completely missing the spade symbol, which was cute. The cat is pointing at it. I feel like I had to incorporate it in some way just because it was silly. And I'm not gonna lie, I was really struggling with ways that this cat could interact with the symbols and just be on the card in general. So it's not my favorite or most clever, but I just love drawing cats, what can I say? Now for the Jack, Queen, and King cards, oh my goodness, these are very hit and miss. The Jack card, very cute. I drew this abstract two-legged ghostly kitty playing with a string. It's simple, but I liked it, and I really enjoyed the string aspect because cat, string. I absolutely love the Queen card. I focused on the cat's face and its mouth. Swirled a string in there. And I just love how it's just a solid, bold design on the cards. Like I mentioned, I really wanted the Jack, Queen, and King cards to be very separate from the number cards. And you can really tell them apart when there's this big, dark, colored illustration. At this point, I also forgot that I wanted to include crowns. So I just threw a little crown in the corner. For King, I had no idea what I was going to do. So I thought I would challenge myself by just throwing a string in there and then working around it. Oh boy, don't do that. This is the worst card. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what happened. It's just a very abstract, melty, goopy, silly cat. It's a specter cat. It's just messing around and being silly and liquidy. And I hate this card, but you know what? The rest are cute. Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Designing these cards was a lot of fun and it really got me thinking about designing my own actual set of cards to print and sell. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'll think about it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.